This podcast is brought to you by Podcast Nation. You are listening to As a Woman, episode 122, Goals and Growth. In this episode, I'm talking all about giving yourself grace, allowing yourself to grow, setting goals, and accepting where you are. Welcome to As a Woman, the podcast hosted by fertility physician, Dr. Natalie Crawford, to educate and empower women. Each week, learn about your health, your fertility, you and how they relate to, to your woman, true episode self. Become a part of the community, fostering collaboration grace. over competition, episode, while I'm learning how to authentically find your grace, voice and amplify others you are, as a woman. Letting go of being perfect and allowing yourself to grow. Podcast, I'm so excited to have you here. You're listening to this in 2022. I am recording this at the very end of 2021. And oh my gosh, what a year. Today, I want to take some time and open up and be vulnerable about something that holds me back immensely and just talk what I've learned. And maybe you'll relate to this. Maybe you will not. First, I want to say thank you so much for all your love and support. The podcast has been such a source of connection and community. We have over 1.5 million downloads. I just cannot believe it. Still recording in my closet, still editing it on my own. And sometimes this means episodes don't happen. And sometimes it means that they do. I have a whole slew of fabulous guest episodes to edit and get up there. And I promise I have a really, really great content coming for you this year. The thing is, sometimes we have these amazing plans And we're just not able to get them done because life happens. Oh my gosh, this is so hard for me. And the podcast is a great example of that. I have not released an episode every single week like I did year number one. Year number one, I would not miss a week. It would happen no matter what. And a lot has changed since 2019. January of 2019 is when this podcast was first released. That means we are coming up on three years together. But like any good type A Enneagram one person that I am, I love making plans. I truly do. I love checklists. I love plans. I love outlines. That stuff like fuels my soul. However, when I'm not able to stick to them or something happens, it's like the whole plan goes out the window. Does anybody else relate to that? If you fall off track. You're just not even on the track anymore. You're not on the road. You're not running the race. I have always been so all or nothing when it comes to getting things done or sticking to my list that it is amazing when it works. Make a study plan for the MCAT, study every day, get through my sections, get through my note cards, take the test, rock it, get into medical school. Amazing. However, if I don't stick to the plan, once I get off of it, it is so hard for me to find my way back. And that's really what 2021 has been, is giving myself grace in moments of not being perfect and allowing the plan to change. But this requires adaptability and this requires grace, acceptance, forgiveness. And that comes hard to me personally. And this extends to things beyond just the podcast or social media, but really to workout plans. Oh, I'm going to do this workout program and I will do it amazingly for 100 days. And then on day 101, something happens. I don't do it. Poof. It's all gone. The whole plan is gone. And then I do nothing. This happens on so many different levels. So really this goes down to something inside of me that is wired to really be perfect or to try to be perfect. Obviously I know I am not at all perfect. I'm somebody who has to study really hard in school. I couldn't just hear something and absorb it into my brain. People are like that, and I will eternally be jealous of them. But I have to hear it, read it, write it, read it again. That's me. Took me way too long to accept that, but that is who I am. That is how I learn. And that takes a really, really long time. But it's truth that I had to accept it in order to do my best in school, in order to study, in order to be able to be the doctor I am today, I had to understand that I can't do what everybody else does or I can't do it how they do it. And that is okay. When I was little and I would take notes, if I made one error on the page, I had to start over. 
that is so debilitating and so dumb. But really, I would. I wouldn't cross it out. That was not good. White out, nope, that was unacceptable. It was start the notes over. And it's really interesting being a parent and seeing your own child like this. So Campbell is my daughter and she is seven and she has these same tendencies. She wants to start over if she makes a mistake. Eraser marks are terrible. Nobody wants to cross anything out. And trying to help her break through that has really taught me a lot about my own limitations and what I need to do or how I need to talk to myself to really be better, to grow and to develop. You have to accept where you are. So number one, I love goals. I love them. I am wandering lost in the forest without a goal or something to work towards. That's something I've learned about myself. So if you have been around for the podcast for a long time, you know, episode number one is called, What is Your Goal? Because goals help us have direction. And having direction is important for growth and change and happiness and fulfillment. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy just because you have direction. But if you don't know what you're working towards in any given arena or aspect of your life, you're probably not going to make any progress. You're going to feel stagnant and unhappy. So identifying goals is priority number one. But something that took me a little longer to develop is the why in the goal. Not just setting the goal and doing it because it's a goal, but really having a reason why. So an example, instead of I'm going to work out every day, which is a fabulous goal. That's a very distinct, accomplishable goal, doing something to move your body every single day. But that doesn't really have a why. So I want to be the healthiest version of myself, to live longer, be an active parent, be able to swim, hike, play with my kids. Therefore, I'm going to work out every day. Now, that's a motivated goal. There's a reason behind that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have days where things are not going to go your way and you're going to want to just trash the goal. It is so easy to say, I'm just not going to work out today. It doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. And the reality is it doesn't. However, if you're like me, kind of all or nothing when it comes to your plans, staying on the plan is going to be the first thing that's going to help you. The more you can stick to the plan that you outlined, the more you can stick to the goal because you have a reason for that goal, the happier you're going to be, the more you're going to grow, the better. So number one, what is your goal? And number two, why is this your goal? Why is this important to you? The third thing I want you to think through when it comes to goals or life or this new year and what you're looking to hopefully accomplish or who you want to be is what do you need to do to get there? And what will qualify to make you happy? This is actually something important to think about. And this may mean that your goal is more defined versus work out every day. I want to run a marathon or run a 5K on Thanksgiving, be that family that does the turkey trot. Or maybe instead of study every day, it's I want to pass this test. I want to accomplish this thing. That very defined goal has a timeline and it's going to expire, right? It has a deadline. Deadlines are good because they start to form the structure of the plan. So the plan is what you're going to need to do to get there. Now here is really where giving yourself grace is going to come in when we start thinking about ourselves, our lives, our structure, our routine. You are not going to stick to this plan every day. I am speaking to myself more than I'm speaking to you. It is almost impossible, never say impossible, but it's almost impossible to have every day go just as planned and to be able to stick to that plan hardcore. So I need you to, number one, build in redundancy for yourself. Number two, understand that you don't have to do something every day to get to your goal. And number three, accept where you are. Accept the fact that it's okay to not do something and to stay on the road. You don't have to get off the road. You don't have to give up on the goal. You don't have to change paths completely just because you miss a day or a week or because something goes wrong, because things will happen. This is where I beat myself up. I make a plan. I make it for every single day. 
one day doesn't happen on the plan and I just totally give up. I think part of it is that perfectionist in me. Part of it is I have not given myself any wiggle room in the plan. There's no place to recover. It'll exhaust me to do so. And I've been unrealistic in accepting where I am or what's going to happen in life. You're going to have sick days, bad days, days where you have to work longer, days where friends or family are going to need your attention. And this is your life in the middle of trying to achieve your goals you still need to be able to enjoy and focus on your life. And that's one thing I want you to understand when it comes to planning and to goals, that giving yourself grace to know, I don't have to stick to this plan perfectly. I may not achieve this goal now. Maybe this isn't going to happen and I need to make some growth and set this as a goal in the future. And that's okay you can still find a lot of happiness in trying to accomplish those things in those moments by being honest with you and who you are and where you are. I think it's also really important in your life to know the things that you need to be your best at and the things that you can have more grace with. You're not going to be perfect at your job. You're not going to be a perfect parent. You're not going to be a perfect spouse, a perfect friend. You're not going to be perfect at exercising or eating the right foods. But how you cope with the rough stuff is going to make a really big difference. So if you have behaviors, okay, I am an emotional, anxiety-driven eater. I'll just admit to you, if I have a bad day, the number one thing I want to do is eat some yummy, carby food. That's my go-to. I had a bad day. I am stressed out. Something went wrong. Let me eat my feelings. Oh my gosh, that is just not how we should cope with things. But what will happen is that has a lot of downstream effects. I then don't accomplish other things I went to. I then feel really bad that I ate my feelings and I beat myself up about it, thinking about how that's such bad behavior, how I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not setting a good example, and I'm putting too much emphasis on feeling better immediately versus dealing with my feelings. So one, I'm already aware of that, so I've made some good growth there. But two, I need healthier coping mechanisms. This is what I realized in 2021. I need healthier coping mechanisms for when things go wrong because things are going to go wrong and you're going to have bad days. And to act like that's not going to happen means you're not going to have a reserve for how you're going to handle it. And so I need you to think about what you're going to do in those moments. So instead of turning towards alcohol, cigarettes, food, shopping, I mean, there are things that can really be not great mechanisms for coping. What can you do instead? Can you call your best friend? Schedule a therapy appointment? Go for a walk, exercise, cook, journal, read a book, take a bath or a shower. What can you do when things get too icky that are not going to self-destruct? Because you're not going to sit there and feel bad about yourself for taking a hot bath like you are if you drink a bottle of wine. Do you understand that? Number one, you need to have a mechanism to accept that things aren't going to go good all the time and you're going to have stress. What are you going to do in those moments? If you know what it is, I had a bad day, so I'm going to go take a hot shower. You're going to do that first before you jump into the alcohol or the food. And that is going to be helpful. Number two, if you do the bad things, it's okay. Do it. Let it go. Give yourself grace to say, you know what? That was not only not on my plan to achieving my goals. It was also, number two, not my good coping behavior. And it's okay. I'm going to learn from it, and I'm going to try to steer away from it next time, but I'm not going to let it define me as a person because then you've taken one choice and you've doubled down. You've made it even worse because you can't give yourself grace or forgive yourself for those choices. And so when you're thinking about something you want to accomplish and you're coming up with your goal and you're coming up with your why and you're allowing yourself to have room in your plan for missteps. What does that mean? Is there a certain day of the week that you haven't scheduled anything that's a catch-up day or a bonus day? Are you looking realistically at your days? I'll use me again. 
I cover IVF on Tuesdays and Fridays. Those are my days. Those days start earlier. So I would be setting myself up for failure and not accepting where I am if I make some plan that's going to require me to work out for an hour and a half those days. That's not going to happen. I can't get up, work out for an hour and a half, shower, get ready, and get to the office before seven. So why should that be my plan? Accepting where you are, making a reasonable plan for how you're going to accomplish things is going to say, this is a busy day for me. It's always busy because I have this hard class or this earlier start or I'm covering call or I have service or whatever it is that happens in your life. So I'm going to purposefully schedule something that's more attainable that day. Every day doesn't have to be even. You're allowed to have days where you go all out on things for you and days where you do nothing. You need to balance it out overall. Every day doesn't have to be the same. So you don't have to follow the same workout plan every day. You don't have to meal prep every day. It's okay to say Tuesday's the day we order tacos because that's a day that's hard for me to get home and cook. Make a plan though, because if you have no plans for dinner and you have no plans for working out, you're going to eat crappy food not exercise consistently, start to gain weight, feel bad about yourself, overdrink alcohol, become depressed, and that's not who you want to be. So having an outline for what you want to accomplish and how you're going to get there and why these things are important to you, I want to meal prep so I can cook healthy foods most of the days because it's important to show my kids that eating vegetables and healthy food and sitting around the family dinner table, that's important to me. That's a goal and a reason why. Well, how are you going to accomplish that? You're going to make a plan. You're going to decide what meals you're going to make for the week. You're going to pre-order your groceries. Maybe you're like me and you have to chop them all up on the weekend and meal prep because sometimes your week gets away from you. Accepting where you are and making a plan, giving yourself days that have flexibility, that's going to be important and essential. The last thing I want to say is that it's very important that you understand that it's okay to change paths a little bit or completely. So if you are working towards some goal and it's not right for you, please, please respect yourself enough to give yourself the freedom and the grace to say, that was wrong. I made a mistake. And I want you to allow yourself to be really honest with you and drown out some of the surrounding noise. And that is really hard to do. How do you do that? You must have time for you. Whether that moment to think and be in tune with how you feel, that can happen a lot of different times. For me, sometimes it is the morning journaling in my life planning document before kind of getting ready for the day, a run running, especially outside, clears my brain like nothing else, or a hot shower. Those are my top thinking times. But you have to have that time. You have to have some quiet space with yourself. You have to have the ability to tune in and listen to what your brain and your heart and your gut are telling you. And if they're telling you that you're on the wrong path, do yourself a solid and change paths. Do not have so much pride that you can't change paths. So using myself as an example, I always wanted to be a doctor. Great. I set all these goals, did all the things, went to medical school, loved it all, and had no idea what type of doctor I wanted to be. And part of that is one, because I'd never thought past the initial goal. And two, there's so much noise from society, from everybody else telling you what to do or what you can do or what you can't do, and it clouds your own internal voice. And if you fill all your days with studying and doing these other things and you just stressed and you go, 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 and you never have any moments to listen to yourself, you might make choices that aren't in tune with who you really are or why that was your goal in the first place. And so I matched into emergency medicine. And That's a great field. It's fantastic. I loved clinical medicine. I'm good with my hands. It fit me very well, so I thought. But part of the reason why I chose it was that I didn't have any mentorship. And some of the things that in my heart I really was passionate about, I was told I could not do if I wanted to be a wife and a mom 
or be a good one. That surgery or OBGYN, those things would leave me with a quality of life that would make me too unhappy. And instead of realizing that things aren't worth doing if you're not passionate about them overall, I matched into emergency medicine, my top place, and realized really quickly that if I stayed, I I would leave medicine. This goal that I'd had my whole life, I would leave. And that's because what I really needed was to be able to take care of patients in a more continuous way. And selfishly, I needed to be a part of their story. That's what fuels me, the relationships in medicine in a more prolonged fashion. I don't want to just see you once. I want to see you many times over the course of a journey, and I want to be there with you. And when I said I was leaving emergency medicine and I was going to apply to OBGYN, one, everybody told me I was crazy. It's just intern year blues. You're extending your training. Nobody does this. You're going to be unhappy. But at that point, I felt confident enough. I had listened to myself and given myself grace to say, I made a mistake. This isn't right for me. And instead of just carrying on because I'm a resident and I'm doing the things I need to do, I'm going to pivot. I'm going to actively make a change, listening to me, ignoring the other voices, and I'm going to change course. I'm going to change course. That's a big deal. And you can do that no matter what stage of life you're in. If your brain or heart or gut is telling you that something's wrong, change it. Figure out how to change it. What do you need to do to make that change? And that's okay. Let the pride go. Forget about what other people are going to say. Stop comparing yourself. And I think sometimes we have a really hard time in today's world. Thank goodness there wasn't social media then. I'm serious because the idea of publicly talking about my failure in real time in such a profound way would have been so overwhelming. And I see you out there who are doing it. And I am so inspired by you. Same thing with infertility. I had infertility. You can't control that at all. It's heartbreaking and devastating. And I talk about it now after the fact because it didn't exist as a public platform when I went through it. I was lonely and isolated, but bless you who are talking about it in real time in the moment because that is brave. That is brave. And if you are sharing your vulnerabilities in the moment, I am so proud of you. But do not allow those platforms to be a source for comparison on any aspect of your life. Somebody else's fertility journey, somebody else's medical or career journey, somebody else's personal journey comes to relationships or getting married, somebody else's exercise journey or running a marathon or a workout plan or their eating journey or their weight loss journey. I love that people share things. I find great joy in the community that social media has brought me. But you are you. You cannot compare yourself to everyone out there because what will happen is you won't have grace to give. You'll start to think that the problem is you. And that is when you need to disconnect because those communities aren't helpful. You need to mute or unfollow people. And that's okay too. That's setting a boundary. You're not allowing yourself to compare. You're not allowing yourself to get into that. And you're going to set boundaries to protect your space. I am so hopeful that 2022 brings us all some clarity and some moments to grow. And I think part of doing this is going to be acceptance and planning, forgiveness and flexibility, focusing on healthier habits and setting boundaries, allowing us to not compare and to change course when it's needed. And no matter what, you're enough. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to set really big, amazing goals. You deserve to make that leap and believe in yourself. If COVID has shown us anything, it is that things can change momentarily. There is no reason for you not to believe that you have all the power in the world, because I truly believe that you do. I am so excited to bring you a great 2022 full of amazing content. The podcast has great episodes. So thank you so, so much for all your support. 
The YouTube channel is growing like crazy, almost at 50,000 subscribers. That is a labor of love, but it's really hard hitting on fertility education. That's what we talk about over on YouTube. So if you are here because you want to learn more about your body or your health, head on over to the YouTube channel and check that out. As always, you can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. And thank you, friends. My name is Len Webb. And I'm Vincent Williams. We'd like to welcome you to our documentary podcast, The Class of 1989. 1989. Over the course of six episodes, Vincent and I will examine the importance of six black films that came out in 89 and how they shape and influence popular culture, filmmaking, and society in general. Come on, sucker. Let's get it on. New episodes will begin running weekly on March 6th. 